What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com, back with another Photoshop tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to replace the sky in an image. So before we get started, I do want to take a second and thank my supporters on Patreon. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, uh, you're interested in maybe supporting um, what I'm doing here, make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I just wanted to give you kind of an overview of a good way to replace the skies in your Photoshop images. And so you can use this for architectural images, you can use this for renderings if you want to put a new sky in after the fact. You can do a lot of different things with this. Um, but what I want to do is the first thing I'm going to do, and we're going to focus specifically on masking and adding an image. So what we're going to do in this case is we've got this image here and we basically want to select the sky in the background and mask it out so you can't see it anymore. If you remember last week we talked a little bit about creating masks in Photoshop. And so what we're going to do is you're going to start off and you're going to open up your image and then uh, you're going to do an alt double click on the background so that you can actually make that background editable. So if I do an undo you'll see this little uh, lock right here and you can click on the lock as well. And so basically what that means is when uh, Photoshop first starts off with an image, it locks your background layer and it makes it so you can't edit it. And so go ahead and unlock that layer. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to use the quick selection tool. And so what the quick selection tool is going to do, and you can see in the little preview image right there, is it's going to try to automatically find and follow the edges in this image. And so you can see how up at the top there's a couple different options for a plus and a minus, and also this little icon that shows how big your brush is. And so you can make that brush bigger or smaller by going up here and clicking on this or you can press the brackets on your keyboard, the left and right brackets. So you can use that to adjust how big this brush is. But in this case, uh, we can go ahead and we can just use whatever size brush, probably a 70 is fine. And I'm just gonna click and drag along this along the sky and you can see how in this image we have a very simple edge and so what that's doing is that's just coming in here and that's selecting along the edge um, and figuring out basically where we want to mask this object so we're basically just selecting the sky alright so you can see this did a pretty good job selecting everything in here but there's a few areas that it didn't pick up so in this case like if you look at this little metal piece it didn't pick this little metal piece up and so what I can do first of all is you can add or remove things to your selection by when you have the tool open, you can remove things by using the Alt key. So you can see if I hold down the Alt, this turns into a minus instead of a plus. So you can come in here and you can drag this across, uh, across these little metal pieces that are sticking out and you can remove those from the selection because you can see how the, uh, the smart selection tool didn't pick those up. And we're gonna just kinda get this close for right now. And you can see how I can move back and forth between the plus and the minus. And like I said, we'll just get them close and then we're gonna come in here with a different tool to kinda finalize this selection. So I'm just holding the Alt key, zooming in and clicking and dragging. And I made my, um, I made my brush size a lot smaller using the brackets. And so you can see I'm just kind of coming in here and I'm holding Alt to remove extra things from the selection. I'm just kind of cleaning things up is all that I'm doing. All right, so we'll get our selection pretty close. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here and we're gonna click on the select and mask option. And so the select and mask option, probably when you do this first, um, it's going to pop up this little window off to the right and it's probably going to look like this. And if you go to the view mode, what that'll do is that gives you a few different views that help you kind of see what your selection looks like. So um, like for example, if you do the onion skin, then everything that's not selected is going to be kind of... Uh, it's, it's got kind of this crosshatch pattern on it. If you do the overlay, then everything that's not selected will be selected in red. Um, there's also the black and white option in here. So you can use these to basically see where your selection is and kind of finish refining that selection. And so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to come in here and we're just kind of going to finalize our edges. And you can adjust the opacity 
of the red or you can pick a different color by clicking and dragging on this slider. So I can make it so you can barely see the red. I can make it so all you can see is the red. Um, in this case, 50 to 60% seems to work pretty good. And so you're gonna wanna com come over here to the left and you're gonna wanna click the Refine Edge Brush tool and you're gonna wanna make sure you check the box for Smart Radius. And I'll go ahead and drag my radius to like two pixels or something like that. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna hold the Alt key and I'm just kinda like painting across this and you can see how what it's doing is it's kind of refining this edge in here. So you can see how as I click and drag across this selection while I'm holding the Alt key, um, it's slowly kind of filling in this edge and it's kind of using this smart radius edge detection in order to do that. And so I'm just gonna click and drag along here and it does a pretty good job of figuring this out. And so if you drag this slider for the edge detection, um, and you make the radius a little bit bigger, then you can see what this will do is that'll kind of strengthen the effect. So you kind of get a stronger effect um, the bigger the radius on the edge detection. All right, so you can use the Refine Edge tool to come in here and kind of refine your edges a little bit more. So just kind of zoom in and look at this and look for any areas in here where um, where your selection isn't quite complete. So you can see how some of these aren't quite getting masked out maybe the way that we want them to. So go in there with that tool and kind of fix all of that. So you can see how now I've got a reasonably good selection along here. And you can also tell if you want to switch to like the black and white for example then sometimes that gives you a little bit better view of kind of what's selected and what isn't. So you can kind of play around with some of these settings in order to get the uh, effect that you're looking for. And then the other thing you can do, we'll switch back to the overlay, is you can use these global refinements to adjust what happens with your edges. So like you can smooth out your selection because this selection's kind of choppy and maybe the best way to see this is to go to the black and white. But if you use this to kind of smooth out your selection, you can see how where these edges in here right now are kind of choppy. If you smooth that a little bit, then you can see that your selection becomes a lot smoother. And then same thing with the feathering kind of adjusts this effect so that it goes outwards a little bit. So like if you were to click and drag way out, then it's kind of uh, almost blurring your selection along this edge here. So you can kind of fool around with your feather a little bit. And then you can adjust your contrast to make this a kind of a sharper selection. So you can see if I drag this all the way to the right, this is a very sharp line. But then if I go back to my overlay, then you can see that you're missing some stuff now. Um, but if you drag it back the other way, then you get a little more kind of blending between your edges. Then the other thing you can do is you can use this shift edge to shift your selection inward or outward. So you can see how if I drag this to the left, it's selecting outside of my image a little bit. If I drag it to the right, it's selecting inside my image. So once you've kind of got this the way that you want, you can see how you can select your output settings and you can output it either to a layer mask, a new layer, new layer with layer mask or just a selection. So if I was to just click selection and hit OK, basically what that would do is that would just take this and it would just make it selected. Where if I was to select the box for layer mask and click OK, what that would do is that would go ahead and export this as a mask onto my image. And then the other thing is if you have like very different colors between your edge here and your sky, you can check the box for decontaminate colors. And basically what that's going to do is that's going to, that's going to basically reduce the color spillover. And the way that works is if you look in here, basically Photoshop just adjusts the pixels, but like sometimes with some different, um, very different colors, you get some kind of weird color spillover in here. And that's something you may just want to play around with. And uh, a lot of things in Photoshop you're going to have to just kind of play around with and see uh, what gets you kind of the best 
what the best result is. In this case, I'm not going to decontaminate the colors. I'm just going to click this little drop down and I'm going to go ahead and output this to a layer mask. And so when I output this to a layer mask, you can see what this does is this puts a mask on my image and it's hiding basically everything that wasn't selected. But you can see how it's backwards because we wanted to mask out the sky, not the building. And so what you're going to do is you're just going to click on this layer mask and you're just going to tap control I. And what that's going to do is that's going to invert your mask. And when you invert your mask, you can see how in this little, uh, preview right here, this switches your black and white. So it's taking everything that was white, making it black, taking everything that was black and making it white. And if you remember, whenever you do a mask, anything that's black um, conceals what was in your image. So if you tap like the backspace key, or not the backspace key, the backslash key, you can see the areas that were masked in here. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to import our sky image. And so you're just going to go up to, there's a few different ways you can do this too, which is kind of the theme in Photoshop in general. So you could either bring this building in and then do kind of like a file place embedded, or you could just click and drag this image over. So in this case, I'm just clicking and dragging my sky image into the background in Photoshop. And you can see how this brings us in as its own layer. And so you can kind of resize this if you want to, if it doesn't fit in your image. In this case, it seems like it fits pretty good. Then you can go ahead and hit the enter key. And you can see how what that did is that brought this in as a new layer. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this layer, which is my sky, and if I turn it on and off, you can see that my building's behind it. I'm just gonna click it down, or I'm gonna click and drag it down so that it comes into the background of my image. And so you can see what I've got here is now I've got a sky image in the background of my building. And we've got a little bit of kind of glow around this edge. So I think what we can do is we can just kind of go back and we can just fool around. And we can just come in here with our refine edge tool and then just kind of click and drag and run along this face. And so you can see how as I click and drag, this is showing me that my mask around this edge is getting a lot better. So what you end up doing is you end up playing around with this a lot just to kind of get kind of the result that you're looking for. You don't want this kind of like halo effect around your building because then your blend doesn't look very realistic. So we'll just go back and we'll just refine that edge the rest of the way around using the refine edge brush. And once we're done, we'll just make sure that the drop down for output to layer mask has been selected. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. And so now you can see that our edge looks a whole lot better. And you may have to come in here and play around with it even more just to kind of get some of these other edges to show up the way that you want them to show up. But then the other thing you can do is you can also take this sky layer and you can add a, you can add an adjustment layer on top of this. And so all you have to do to do that is click on this sky layer and then come up here and you're going to add, in this case, we'll just add a curves layer. And so basically what the curves layer is going to do is it'll adjust the brightness or it'll adjust the way that all the layers below it look. And so what you can do is you can click and drag um, to kind of bring your darks out in a different way and you can also do it with your lights but I find doing it with the lights can make it look a little bit more washed out but I just kind of click and drag this over here just to get a little bit more bluer more of a bluer sky and maybe I'll lift it up a little bit um, just to brighten those up a little bit so just play around with this and see what seems realistic but you can see how now if I was to turn if I was to do a shift click on this layer mask I can turn that on and off to see what my original photo looked like and what my new photo looks like. That's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, did you find this helpful? Was there something you would have preferred that I covered? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.